Hi, my name is John. Today I'm going to be doing some iterations on a design. Welcome to another episode. Today I'm going to uh, look at the, revisit this. One of the things about this design is that we designed the circuit board first and then the case. And the keys are a little bit closer than we'd like. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do about that. I'm going to take this apart and uh, show you the keypad and give you an idea of how that works. This is what the keypad looks like when it's uh, outside the case. It's made out of flexible plastic. And then on the back you can see that there are these graphite circles. And let me zoom in so you can see the action. The, uh, the way the key works is you can see the graphite is removed and then it uh, clicks down and there's actually a clicking feeling we can push it down. So what we want to do is try out some different spacings. Now getting another keypad made is pretty expensive but because it's rubber it means we can cut it into individual segments and then put those individual segments into a new case. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to 3D print some case tops with uh, different spacings so we can see what spacings we like. Let's head over to the computer. When I created the holes for these buttons, which you can see if I hide the keypad, I actually created these holes so that they're parametric to the keypad. The problem with that is now I want to go back and I want to try some different uh, keypad spacings. But I can't do that easily because what I would have to do is change the keypad over and over again and try different things. So what I'd like to do is go backwards and break the link between the keypad and then use some formulas to control the size and position of the buttons. So let's go ahead and start that. The first thing I'll do is I'll activate the top and then I'll go back in history to, I believe it's right here, I can tell from these uh, patterns here. This is the, it looks like the sketch. So I'll go back to that sketch and I'll edit the sketch. Now, you'll notice several things about the sketch. One is that we have this offset here, as well as an offset there, and then we have these dotted lines, which are from the keypad, and then the offsets are from those dotted lines. So what I want to do is I want to break that connection. And the way I can do that, I believe, is I can go ahead and select segments such as that, which allows me to delete the... Oh, I have to be careful. So what I want to do is I want to select... And it turns out I can't do it that way. I want to select inside. Nope, that didn't work either. So I'll just go ahead and select the lines. And when I delete all of these dashed lines, I'm getting rid of that parametric relationship between the keypad that I imported and these shapes here. What I need to do then is add a new parametric relationship. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some dimensions. And that will allow me to ensure that it's fully constrained again. So I'll keep this dimension. There's no need to change that. Then I want to have a dimension for the keypad height. I'm just creating these dimensions right now. I'm going to turn them into, uh, well, I may or may not turn them into equations. We'll see. And then I want the width here. Let's try that again. And at this point, I'm not fully constrained because I haven't constrained it to the left and right position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dimension from here to the bottom. All right, I dimension to something else. Uh, one of the things you have to be careful about is you can pick up other things that are behind the current object. Um, now I can set this dimension here. And then finally I'm going to set a dimension that's relative to... I think I'm going to do this one relative to the center. So I'll do dimension from here, and then I'll do to the left side. 
Um, I haven't really decided yet what the best dimension is, but I'll just go ahead and put something in here. Um, it says it's overconstrained. I have to see why. Oh, I see why. Again, I picked the wrong thing. So what I want to do is zoom in when I say dimension and make sure that I click that line. And then I'm going to click the origin. And now that'll sec the, select that point. Now, for some reason, it's not fully constrained yet, so I'm going to grab onto, oh, interesting, various things and see why it's not constrained. And you can see I'm missing some constraints. So I'll go ahead and undo that. And one of the constraints seems to be an equal constraint between these different arcs. So I'll add all of those in. Okay, so now let's see what happens. Okay, so that means I'm missing a vertical constraint here, so I'll go ahead and select that and say horizontal vertical, and I'm most likely missing one from the other ones as well. Okay, so now it's fully constrained. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the same thing for the other sections. Okay, I paused the video because I was having some problems getting this to work and then I eventually figured out what I needed to do. Uh, what I was trying to do is create an equal relationship between these curves and it was giving me this. What I needed to do, and this took me a while to figure out, is to give a dimension to this. And I want this to be the same as this one, so once I do that, then I can go ahead and do the equal relationship and it works just fine. Now the other thing I'm going to do to make things a little bit easier is I'm going to isolate this and then hide the body. And that way I can just see the sketches that I'm working on, which is a lot easier. So I still need to specify a few dimensions. I'll specify the distance here. And then I'm going to make these so that they're collinear. And that, yep, fully constrains that one. So now I can focus on this other one up here. Okay, so now I have everything set up. It looks a little bit messy with uh, some of the dimensions, so I'll move them a lot around a little bit. Uh, but this is uh, fully constrained at this point. And some of these are equations. What I want to do next is create some equations that drive the whole thing because I want to experiment uh, with different spacings uh, between these buttons. So what I'll do is go in here and I'll create some modify parameters. I already have quite a few. And so I'll create a new parameter which is called small button width. And actually before I did that I should have checked what or why I want it to be. So I want to use uh, this value here. So let me copy that value. And then I'm going to define that to be small button width. I'm going to go back quite a bit, uh, back and forth quite a bit. Okay, so that means I can now go back here and select this to be small button width. So now I've got that defined by that equation. I'm not going to define a parameter for these because I'm just going to deal with the horizontal spacing. So the next thing I'll do is I'm going to, I have to think about this a little bit, so I'm going to add a dimension for this one, I believe, as well as this. I think having this defined in here for the enter key will allow me to do some calculations, but uh, we'll have a look. I'm not quite sure where I'm going at the moment. So enter key button. Okay, so now I can go down here and select enter button width. 
So now that one's constrained. Now that I have equations for the width of the buttons as well as the spacing here, I want to go ahead and make sure that I have similar equations for the pattern. So the first pattern, let me turn the, uh, the body back on. All right, so the, the first uh, one right here is going to have the spacing. You can see that I have the X spacing and then I also have the, the Y spacing. And I want to turn those into equations as well, or expressions, I should say. So the first thing is to go in here to modify, and I'll add a parameter for button spacing. Then I can go in here and say button spacing here. So that shouldn't change anything, and it didn't. I'm not going to worry about the Y spacing because I'm not going to be changing this. Uh, we're just experimenting with the X spacing. And I'll call that right button spacing. And enter it here. Okay, so now I have those parameters. It means that I can take these parameters that I just created. Well, I'm not going to change the button width. Uh, but what I can do is I can change the button spacing or the right button spacing. I can create some equations that allow me to try different spacings. I ended up not recording a lot of the work that I did creating expressions because it actually took me a while to figure out what I wanted. Uh, I had just a small number of these, uh, small button width, enter button width, and button spacing, I believe. Uh, and then I added a, a number of other things as well. Uh, what I ended up doing is deciding to base all of this on the keypad width so I could specify the total width. Now when I started, I wrote the, the number down so I could come back to it. What I had for the keypad width was 1.482. And you'll notice that if I make that change and then regenerate, we have the keypad spacing that was there before. And that's easiest to see if I turn the keypad on you can see that the holes match the keypad uh, for the most part. I actually made a few changes uh, because I discovered things weren't quite where I wanted them to be. So the other thing that I did is to, let me turn the, uh, go back to the parameters. I decided I wanted to try making this quite a bit wider. So I set it to 1.6. And when we set it to 1.6, you'll see that the spacing is quite different, so there's a big gap on either side. I'll turn the keypad off so that it's easier to see. Now, one of the things that I did uh, the other day is I took the circuit board, a photograph of the, the circuit board, and I put that on top of the 3D model. What that means is I can see where the pads are underneath the openings to ensure that even though I'm moving these left and right, they'll still fit uh, the keypad traces that are on the circuit board, and you can see that works just fine. Uh, the keys themselves have a circle in the middle, which is made out of graphite. So all of these will work without any problems. Okay, so going back to the equations, if you want to pause, you can take a look at this and study it. But uh, the basic idea is I broke it down to having this value here, menu gap extra. And that value is the the extra distance from here to here over the distance from here to here. And so that way I can tune the total width as well as the extra width here to try out some different spacings. So I do have a little bit more I can push this if I want to really try. You can see this is about uh, 0 0.09. So that means I can easily go another tenth of a thousandth on the width, the total width, by changing this to 1.7. And 
see how that looks. And you can see it's getting a little close to the edge, but I think that should be fine. Let's take a look from the top and you can see that yes, this should still work. Now my plan for this is to use my personal 3D printer to print some different tops with the different keypad spacing. Uh, and the reason for using the uh, the 3D printer is because you know I can start it and then walk away. It completes the entire thing in one operation. Whereas if I want to use my milling machine to make these parts, I have to change cutters and do a bunch of operations and calculate all the tool, tool paths. So at this point, I'm pretty happy with this, and now I'm going to get back to the battery cover, which is on the back. If I move the history forward, you can see that I'm starting to make progress on the battery cover. What I don't have at this point, I will hide this. So you can see, oops, oh, I forgot. Um, it's actually a child of the, the bottom. So if I hide the first body, or it's the second body, there we go. Here you can see the, the keypad. You know, I've got a little bit of work to do on the, the battery box cover because you know, obviously I don't want those on there. Uh, but what you can see from this is that I'm missing a few things. One is I'm missing some parts on the plastic, both on the, t the, the bottom and also the door, to hold it in place. And then the other thing is I, I need a latch here. to. So basically it's going to hinge here and then it's going to be latched here. So I have to add those parts. And in another video I'll show you how I made this battery door opening. Uh, at this point I'm going to call it a wrap. Let me know if you guys like this type of video where I'm using Fusion 360 and showing you my thought process in uh, trying out different experiments as part of getting toward a design that we're happy with. See you next time. Thanks for watching.